and that was right here, our intersect spot. Now, because this is an inverse, I this is what is my x before, this was my y, this now becomes my y, my range. This now becomes my x, my domain. So my log is simply going to look like this. And it's still going to cross. I'm going to take the 0, 1 and interchange it and get 1, 0. It follows the rule of inverses. And we said an inverse is a reflection over the line y equals x. So that's all a log is. It's just a, another way to look at a, um, an exponent. The reason they probably came up with logs, one, it's easier because you, you do deal with a lot of scientific notation numbers. And when your numbers are very large and very small, this is the way to work. But also, when they do this, the one reason we need that log statement is to be able to pull down the exponent when there's an exponent in your power. So, in your uh, so variable in your exponent. So, first thing you got, there was y equals, and then the We're going to swap this around in a minute, and this is going to be. We're going to we're going to swap it around in a minute. Now, notice I didn't put the ten in here, but I can. The base of the exponent is the base of the log. We're going to we're going to see how to flip flip those back and forth in a minute. But I want everybody to get the concept that all a log is is just the inverse of an exponent. So it follows the same rules of a reflection over the line y equals x. And because of that, all your domains and all your ranges will flip because you interchange your x and your y, which is important. Um, and also, the one time that if you don't have a base for a log, it is a base 10. Most of our, our number system is base 10, so that's an automatic. We also do the natural log, which we'll get to in a minute. And if I want to talk about the basic logs first. And I want you to remember this. The log equals x plus. Okay? Okay. Logs aren't that scary. Alright, so now, if I want to take this, and I graph this, all I have to do in my calculator, hmm, I didn't, well, let me show you real fast. Did you guys learn um, how to change the base? Okay, did you learn where the log base key is? Okay. Oh, alpha? Alpha? Um, well, I don't know how to go, go there. I usually just go to math. It might be there. So if you go to math and you come down to log base, this will allow you to put something other than a base 10. So all you have to do is we used to just change your base all the time, but now they allow you guys to use this. We had to, uh, sometimes you'll see a calculator and it'll be crossed out. we will have a line through it. That's because of probably four or five years ago, they didn't allow these to be used. They didn't allow summation and they didn't allow log base. But now they do. Even before Common Core, they allowed it. Why is this crossed out? It's crossed out. I, I have to redo that calculation. So if we put this in and we graph it, okay, I must have done something wrong. Oh, there's no x. Oh, what am I doing here? If we put this in and we graph this with an x, take this out of here for a second, and any base is going to graph like this. Any base is going to graph. Now, you're going to have the same exact problem when you do this, when you do your exponent. When you did your exponent thing, it kind of looked like it stopped here, didn't it? It kind of looked like it got stuck right there and it kept on going. It's going to look like it gets stuck right here too. But if you take a look at this and you just do a value on this, you're going to see it here. If I do <coughs> zero, it's going to tell me nothing. I can't use a zero in here. If I do a value point zero 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 one, it's going to give me a value of y. So again, where your x-axis was your natural asymptote, the x and the y swap. 
your Y axis is going to become your natural acetone. Okay, so you can graph this in any base. If I don't want to put this here, this is technically base 10. I don't know how to get that out of there. I have to do it over. So if I just want to graph this here, it's log base 10. It's going to have the same exact look. But before, when you guys did exponential with a 2, there was your curve with 2. What happened when I did? All it did was cross through the same point here. It just came a little closer down here and a little deeper in here. Exponents do the same thing because they're reflections. So as I increase my base, it's just going to get closer and closer to that line. If I make my base a little bit bigger, it'll work the same way. Now, a natural log has its own has its own thing too here. A natural log is ln. Did you do ln? Yeah. You did this. Okay. I'm not sure if you covered these or not, so I'm sorry if I'm going to ask you. It looks the same, right? Because we said a natural log is about 2.7132, blah, 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 blah. So about 2.7, so it falls between the 2 and the 3. It's just what they consider a natural log. So whenever we use base E, so when something is base E, we're going to turn this into an LN. And they're going to work the same way. Make sense? Now, they're all going to follow the same path as, as the other one. Now, when we get here, you can also put this in your calculator like this. Put this guy in. And do the same thing here. 2, come across, 32. You guys were able to use this. You're still able to use this one. Now, Think about this. If a log is an exponent, just think about this for a second. F5 is an exponent. To what? To the 2. This is my base. This is my exponent. Isn't this true? So did I change anything? I can graph any base I want. I can put anything I want. You guys are very fortunate. You have this blog thing. Back in the day, we had to use a change of base. And we'll still, if you like change of base, you just go like this. You draw a line. Whatever stays below the line, stays below there. So all you do is, it technically changes this to a base 10. Did you learn this? So this is the same now in base 10. You, you guys can use the log P, but I want you to understand what it's doing. Um, this just means base 2. I can't graph. I can't. I can graph it. I can change my base. I can do it with a log base. If I were to graph this, and I need to graph base 2, and I don't have that log P, I need to somehow convert this to base 10. So we call this change of base formula, and we'll talk about this again. You absolutely can put that in base 2. I just want to show you what, where these things come from. So if you did a base 2, let me put an X in here, and you came down here and you said, put an X in here, graph it. I'm going to convert to base 10. Log base 10 of X over divide it by log base 10 of 2. This will give me the exact same graph when I graph it. It is what we call a change of base formula. We converted it to base 10. Because our number system works in base 10. Your log button is base 10. You have a nice little one here now. You can change your base. I know it's so annoying with the next one. It throws me off completely. So, 
there's a lot of things going on here with your love that I want you to see we go back and forth. No, they didn't do this at all with you last year. Can you this one? They might have mentioned it, but what the nice part now is you have a calculator that will do it, but I just kind of want you to understand. If you understand the concept that laws are really base 10, and they work off of their exponents for base 10, you can convert these easily. Now, an easy way to take this and convert this is this way. If you're going to flip this around, your log is here. Follow your log. Keep your equal sign. Use this phrase. I know the Duda, uh, Miss Imperial uses back. If you use back, base, answer, power, that works fine too. I happen to use log equals exponent. I think Baker does the same thing. Yeah, I'm not sure what um, uh, Mr. DiCaprio was using. Did you hear the acronym and the uh, fun things like that? Okay. Kind of okay. Well, I'm not sure. Like, you guys are all coming from different things. If you have a way that you convert them and you're comfortable with, stay with that way. If you like the back, that works fine for you, use that. If you have no way to use it, this always works good because a log is an exponent. So you're going to take the base. This is your base of your log. You're going to make that the base of your exponent. And this is your exponent. So now you solve this exponentially. You bring this down to a base of 2. So therefore, y is equal to 5. And you put this in your calculator, and it said y is equal to, it said equal to 5? Absolutely. Because you have to change the base, you have to change. You have to close the flat. But I want you to, to get comfortable with the fact that logs and exponents flip back and forth. They're inverses of each other. Okay. All right. Here's some properties. I think I put them on your sheet just so that you get comfortable with it. These properties, not so much for exponents or logs. Guys, for the LNs, they will come in very handy. Um, you can also figure most of these out as you go. If you flip this around, all this says is this. If you flip this around, not that you have to memorize them, I just want you to get familiar with them because when you see them, it'll be a lot easier than working them out. This says this is my base, A. This is my exponent, 0. Isn't anything raised to the 0 power 1? So when you see this, you it just you start to get familiar with it. You don't actually have to memorize these. When it gets to the LNs, they they get real. LNs are the ones I want you to get the most comfortable with because these you can always flip back and forth. This will say the same thing. The base of my log is the base of my exponent of my exponential equation. There's my exponent. Is it a to the one equal to a? And any number that means any number that I put in here. Log base 2 of 2, 2 to the 1. Isn't this true? So that makes sense, right? In other words, what am I going to raise 2 to, this, to the power to get me 2? Makes sense, right? This guy, a to the x. It's a to the x. Sorry, that's an x. It's just an identity. And this one here, um, if my logs are both the same here, if they're equal to each other, same base, and we will always work in the same base. We're not going to switch the bases around on you. So if this is the same, if these have to be equal, then these guys have to be equal. I can't say log base 2 of 9 is equal to log base 2 of 8. Could I possibly say that? So doesn't this make sense that this has to be a 9? Right? So these are just properties. Um, just so that you get familiar with them, most of them here will be the ones I want you to kind of remember. Because these will be the ones we need. When you see ln, this says you see a log. If there is no base, this is a base 10. So 10 
from a zero is one. And it works base count all the way through. The base for an ln is e. So I say e to the zero is one. Make sense? Same property. This is base e. e to the one is e. Same exact property as that. Base e works the same as either a two or a three base, because it's right in between the two and the three. e to the x is e to the x. Now, why these are so nice to remember is this. If this one says, <coughs> technically, what you're bringing this down is when you bring this down in front, ln e, what is ln e equal to? One. So ln e is going to come out. This works the best with, with the natural log. So the log ones we can kind of figure out. We were a little bit more comfortable with that. The LNs, everybody gets a little bit more panicky, but when we use your power rule and we bring this down, LN E will always cancel out to one. Okay? Because of this rule. You don't see it as much in the log as you can see it in the LN. In the LNs you'll see it. You might even remember seeing that one. So we're going to work back and forth with these. If you use a base E, you have to use E's. You can use those for any base. And it can be used for any base. In your book, you're going to see a lot of use for LN. They're just going to take, whenever we get to, to switch them around, instead of using a log, they're just going to automatically go to an LN. When they take the log of both sides, they're going to take the LN of both sides. Just because you can. You can easily just use LN for everything. It works just the way a log works because it is a log. So most college books, when you bring down your exponent and you use your, 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 use your log rule, you're going to see ln used all the time. It's just probably easier. So today I'm just trying to get you guys comfortable with looking at logs so that you don't panic when you see the word log and everything else looks good. Now, what I want to do is this. I want to show you that these are, in fact, reflections over the line y equals x, so that we can see that a log is simply an inverse of an exponent. So before we said, we're just going to take these, and we're going to swap them. If I put this in my calculator, anything to the negative 1, you can give me a negative number. If I put this exponent in as negative 1, do I get a negative number? Mm -hmm. I get what? A fraction. So if I put this in as negative 1, I get what as an answer? 1 half. Good. If I put a 0 in here, 1. If I put a 1 in here, 2. If I put a 2 in here, 4. Okay. Now, <coughs> when I do the log, base 2, a little log, all I do is switch these around. 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, I think I'm short about. And 4, 2. This is my log, this is my exponent. So all I'm doing is applying the rule, interchange the x and the y. That's all we're doing. So when we graph this, this guy, as I graph it, is going to be here. There's my 0, 1. There's my 1 half. It's going to go like this. And when I graph my other part, I'm going to graph negative 1, 1 half, 1, 0. That's swap. 2, 1, and 4, 2. It's going to go like this. Right, right very close to that asymptote. Now let's talk about these for a second. My domain for this guy, we said, all real numbers. My range, I'll never get a zero out of there. My asymptote, was, my asymptote is my x-axis, my y equals zero line, my x-axis. Now, everything interchanges. So now, 
my x, which is dom my domain, becomes my range for this guy. Doesn't that look true? Isn't I'm still, aren't I using all y values? Yes, right? My y, which is my range, now becomes my x, my domain. Ah, isn't that true? Because now I ride very, very close to that axis, but I never, never, never touch it. My asymptote also interchanges. So my asymptote, where it was y equals 0, is now going to be x equals 0, my y axis. My, let's take this one step further. My intersect point to 0, 1. What's my intersect point for my left? Flip those. 1, 0. Right. So everything is just a reflection. Just the interchange of the x and the y. Make sense? And your transformations are going to work exactly the same as they did for your exponents. I printed out the, the transformations because they look a little bit different. Um, but it's the same thing. Before, if you had this, what did this plus 3 do? Um, up, 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 3. So you had a vertical shift. So when you see, see this with your log, it is still a vertical shift. That doesn't change. If it's negative, it goes the opposite way. So when you did this, when it was up here in that exponent, what did that do? Move it to the right. It was a horizontal, right? Now it just looks a little bit different because it's down here. Remember, we write it down. We flip them around a little bit. But it's still a horizontal shift. Whenever it's in parentheses, it's next to that X, it's a horizontal shift the opposite way. So I printed them out for you just because sometimes they look a little bit different so that you don't get confused. Again, if it's next to the X, put your finger from the positive to the negative. It's a reflection in my Y. If it's not next to the X, it's next to the Y. It's a reflection in my x axis. And again, we have a dilation out here where it's the same way. If it's greater than 1, it's a vertical stretch. If it's a fraction, it's not going to be a negative. A negative is a reflection. If it's a fraction, it's going to give you a vertical shrink. So those we can get familiar with. If we switch it around, it works the opposite way, just like our exponents did with a horizontal stretch and shrink instead. So when you take this, and I want you to try to do these without your calculator, then put them in your calculator to see where, what it's looking like. So your core graph is just simply this. Base 10, log of x. This is my core graph. Remember, we're sketching. What's this negative 1 doing? Minus 1. Shifting it to the right, one unit. So I'm going to get a horizontal shift, right, one unit. So you're going to move this guy over here, and it's going to just go like this. Oh, sorry, my, my board is just a little bit off. Oh, this is an exponential one. I'm going to be like this all day because of that thing. Thank you. So when I move this, this is a good this is a good place to move. One zero, and now it's the zero at the two zero, and it's going to come like this. Now, when we did this before, a horizontal shift had no effect on our exponents, but a horizontal shift will have an effect on your log. So where this guy is x equals zero. I'm going to add 1 to it. So now, my asymptote is going to change. It's completely the opposite as your exponent. A horizontal shift did not affect your exponent. It will affect your log. A vertical shift did affect your exponent. A vertical shift will not affect your log, because look where your all real numbers flip. 
because now your range now is all real numbers. So any vertical shift affecting your y is not going to change your log. Good? So they kind of work exactly the same. This guy, if you're more comfortable putting the plus 2 over here, put it out here. So what does that cause you to do? Vertical shift up 2. And I want you to make sure you use those. God bless you. So now, instead of here, start with your basic log. If you vertical shift it up to, you're just kind of moving it up to the unit. Um, the intercepts right now, you can probably put the X in and get your Y intercept if we had, if we don't have a Y. I can't really do your, your other one now. Hold off on the intercepts for a little bit. Before we were able to find your y-intercept, now you can technically find your x-intercept, but hold off just a little bit. Just get your transformations down pat. Tomorrow we'll do this part, the domain. Who's the whole thing? The whole thing is for homework. Does it look like a lot? Yeah.